Ô, Gael, quantos anos você tem agora? Quanto é isso? Tá mais. E antes, você tinha quantos anos? Um. E depois? Dois. E depois? Três. E quantos anos você vai fazer no seu próximo aniversário? Quatro anos eu vou fazer aniversário. Quando depois sete anos? Sério, filho? E depois? Depois eu vou ficar lá muito. The brain never stops developing until you die. If you're 100 years old and you learn something that you didn't know before, your brain makes new connections. But the most rapid period of brain development is in the first few years. Babies learn more in the first three years of life than they will ever learn again. They learn more rapidly from zero to three than they will learn from 10 to 13 or 20 to 23 or 30 to 33. There are critical periods in development where the brain's uh, structures are just waiting for the environment to show how does this culture do things. A volte mi sono sentita spesso dire il bambino ha bisogno di imparare, una sorta di vaso da metterci dentro dei saperi, no? Non è vero, non è questo. Non è una tabula rasa dove tu eh, appoggi i tuoi saperi, le tue competenze. L'importante è vedere il bambino come capace di avere tanto dentro, di avere tanto da insegnarti. So the only way that children can achieve this amazing capacity for learning and exploration, that all depends on the fact that they have a very secure, stable, loving set of caregivers, people who are taking care of them. Probably the most significant discovery is that brain development is influenced as much by the environment as it is by genetics beginning at birth, actually even before birth. The experiences that a young child has, the interactions a child has with people, literally gets under the skin and into the brain and affects how brain circuits are made, how the architecture of the brain is built. So early experience literally shapes the architecture of the developing brain. Learning begins literally from the time that babies are born and there's even some evidence that there's learning inside of the womb. I think that what you see when you watch a child walk into a preschool that is curious and eager to learn is a child who's had positive experiences before he even got to preschool. He's had nurturing and responsive parents. He's been in a safe environment. He's had good health and nutrition. That child comes with a set of skills and a set of interests in life, in exploring, in playing, in socially playing well with others, that a child that doesn't have those experiences doesn't come with. The children whose development is at risk are children who live in very difficult circumstances. Not a bad day here, a bad day there, but chronic, constant days, weeks, months, years, where there's very little positive interaction, where the home may be just very disorganized, not because parents don't love their children, but they're overwhelmed by their own life circumstances. Oftentimes, as societies, we fail to support parents in providing them the support they need for their children. That's when we start to see an immediate sort of child's toxic environment start to build. High levels of stress, high levels of conflict, lack of food, lack of nurturance. We know all of that together is a toxic environment because it's not allowing the child to develop to their full potential. The way people parent is heavily influenced by the way they were parented. And whether adults have the skills and the capabilities to provide a safe, stable environment for children is determined by whether they themselves were raised in a safe, stable environment. Somewhere along the line, the cycle has to be broken. And the science is telling us you can't bypass the adults. All families face challenges today, and our goal is a community, as a society, as countries, should be to support them as they nurture their children. 
you know, they use the term, it takes a village, and I don't think they mean that as a lot of people taking over your child. What they mean is that we help you raise your child as a community, and that's what we're after. In the United States, we've conducted these studies that show what is the benefit of a dollar of investment in the early years of the child. What we found when we only consider these more limited objectives like earnings and employment and things like crime, that we find that each dollar invested pays back over the lifetime about $7, which is a very high return. The mother, this whole notion of the human capital invested in the child, the greatest part of which is the mother's, that that love is an important part of, of the economy, which typically is not fully recognized in the, in the society. Why, knowing what we know about how important this early childhood time is, is so important for the success of their future, for their future IQ, for their future health. If it's so important, why do we act like it's just the mother's job to take care of that baby or just the family's job? Why are we not saying this should be the job of our entire society? Why is this not the job of our governments? Why is it not the job of industry to help protect this little baby?